Hi everyone, it's Jebro, and this is going to be my first build of the 23rd June patch trait changes and also the specialization changes. This is going to be very, very interesting and there's a lot of information to go through and might not go through it in, or the, in the entirety in this video, but I just thought I would go through some bits and pieces and also give you a build or two. Um, of course, this has been tested in more than really 1v1 situations rather than team situations, um, depending on other comps, whatever other people are starting to run as well. Um, these builds will, of course, evolve. But at the moment, this is kind of based on the previous uh, trade changes as well, but with some very new additions and also some trade lines which I think, or I'm not sure at the moment, aren't going to be as useful as they used to be. Something which you might notice in this build is that I have not gone into one tree in particular. That is going to be tools. No speedy kits. Ish. I'll explain that as I go through this build, but that's one thing to just take, in note, at, and take note of at the moment. Of course, now when you've, with the trait lines, you have to go full in. And if you remember with that trait line specifically, it wasn't really a lot of use in it other than that trait um, for the speedy kits, of course. Um, so it's going to be very, very interesting to see how this comes together. But I think it's going to be interesting and actually give you a lot more builds, to be honest. So let's, get, let's, let's just get on with it, go into explosive first. Of course, evasive powder keg, I'll explain more about that later. Um, rem remember, that's creating a bomb when you dodge. Still going to go for Grenadier, of course. Now it's just the throw velocity and blast radius, which is going to be increased. And it's not... Um, the actual uh, trait which was before, of course, creating an extra grenade is now baseline, and uh, that's actually that's really nice now as well. And it's also in it's just going to be the minor, you know, it's really really low in the trait tree, so that's nice as well. Um, so it gives some more options later, of course. Uh, still packed powder explosions cause vulnerability at the moment. I've got bombs and I've got grenades. Of course, this is really dependent on how you want to run it, how you want to play it. And I'm running an elixir there for the alchemy line as well. So this is this is all all come apparent while I'm going through this build. Uh, short fuse bombs explode faster and have a faster cooldown. Again, if you're not using bombs, you can change this into something like uh, shaped charge, of course, which is actually pretty good with the vulnerability. Um, and also, you know, we can go for the aim assisted rocket as well, which I've not really tried out. Um, I'm not convinced about that trait at the moment either. Explosive powder. Really nice. Uh, the tu now turrets explode and are knocked back foes when destroyed combined into this trait, which is very, very good indeed. And uh, yeah, you don't actually have to pick that now. It's just an adept. You can just it will just be forced on you as you go into this trait line. Now here comes the big one. Thermobaric detonation. Wow. That's a long name. Um, the blast combo blast finisher on this is very nice indeed. There's going to be some footage in the background of that, me using that in combat in a 1v1 fight. But also I can show you it right now. It combos very uh, very well with your heals um, because, of course, it is a blast finisher. As soon as you dodge, it blasts. It goes off pretty much straight away. And you've got shrapnel and you've got siege rounds as well. Unless you're using more kit, you know, that's not going to be useful, obviously. And the cripple and the bleed, it's okay, but it's not as powerful as that blast. You don't need bombs to use this. So you can just use something like Slick Shoes if you would so wish, or Toolkit, which will probably be the thing. Because this blast finisher is just really using it for the blast finisher alone. So if we get into combat here, you can see I'm just going to do a few combos for you to show you exactly how strong this is, because... Even if you combo it up, combo up with this regenerating mist, you can still get a nice little bit of burst healing. So I'm just going to attack here so I can get into combat so it works. But if I use my first ability and then dodge, you can get some nice blast healing. That's just off a dodge and that regenerating mist off that tool belt skill. That's a pretty nice availability of healing in itself. Now if you think about comboing it up with something like he healing turret, and then you've got maybe even a shield as well. You know, you're going to come up with, you're going to have a nice little bit of burst healing without even putting things like your supply grade down, like we used to see you could do a massive amount of healing. Okay, you wouldn't do that necessarily in many situations, but you can pull off a nice little blast bit of blast healing just by dodging. And also, you know, if you're healing that much, you know, you're going to have 
um, you're going to want to survive anyway. So that blast is just going to come with it for free, which is pretty awesome. Um, I'm pretty excited about this, really. So let's try this combo out. Hopefully, we'll be able to pull it off first time. Okay. Awesome. So we have the um, combo, which is going to be healing turret. Then we overcharge it. Then we dodge. And then we explode it. Let's just do that again very quickly. It's going to be quite difficult now because the, mo the golem's actually quite low. Just waiting for the cooldown of the heal. You can see it now. So that's a nice bit of combo healing for you right there. It's very nice in, in fights. It's very good for you to regen very, very quickly. And in different builds, um, when I if I don't use firearms, I can actually get some more healing out of it because my healing power will be increased if I gain a regeneration uh, boon. But I will show you that in a particular other build in this same video. Okay, so... Let's go through down to alchemy. We've gone through explosives there. So with alchemy, you know, elixir focused is pretty nice still. This is why I've got elixir S at the moment. Invigorating speed. Now I said I haven't got speedy kits. The reason I haven't got that is because down below I've got something called heavy armor exploit. Now this is very good. Your critical hits have a chance to give you swiftness and apply vulnerability. This was in the last set of trait lines as well. But with the crits that come out from your grenades, especially, you know, you've got more chances to crit. And most of the time I've got this up when I'm fighting. Um, so this is where we're going to get our swiftness from. And this is where we're going to get our vigor, uh, our vigor from as well. Transmute, of course, uh, incoming conditions have a chance to convert into boons. That's not changed at all. Uh, backpack regenerator, same as before. Um, alchemical tinctures... These words they come up with, honestly. Frangle consuming elixirs removes conditions from the effect you, those affected. Your boon duration is increased. Now that's good combination, of course, going with that um, adept as well, where you're going to be getting more boons. And of course, the removing conditions is going to be very useful in this meta that's coming up because there's going to be conditions. And it's not going to be even if people are just focusing on a condition build because conditions are just going to be generally more powerful. Um... That's the feeling anyway, because, you know, there's not really a stack limit or I'm not aware of what the number exactly is because I can't build it up myself on this build. Um, then if we go into the final line, there's some nice traits here. Now, there's some possibilities. HGH is actually one of those possibilities because you're forced in this into this trait line. You have to go with one of these. You can't just go, you know, two, three, whatever. So HGH is actually an option. Not the option I've chosen. I've gone for Throw Simulant, which is actually very, very good. And this is when you actually um, see, if you if you can see it there, it says, Throw out a stimulant that heals, grants fury, and removes a debilitating condition. This happens when you have you just use your healing skill, which is awesome. And combos well with a different build. Now, the reason I've gone for this build in this variation at the moment, firstly to show you, is that there is incendiary powder there. And I want to explain that maybe this is not something that is going to be definitely used as much, but could be comboed up with something else. I'll show you that build after this. But it's very, very nice for your survivability. Removing that condition is very good. Um, the debilitating condition, the weakness, blind vulnerability, and whatnot as well. And also gives you that fury, which is very nice. And it does give you an extra heal. So think about that combo healing that we had before with that stimulant pack that gets dropped. Very good indeed. So, let's go into final line. So, with this, I'm going to go into firearms. Now, there was a few changes in firearms, but of course, I'm not sure I'm going to use this trait line. It's still very powerful with incendiary powder, but, you know, there's some other things which I'm not too, sh not too sure about. So, critical hits have a chance to cause bleeding. It's standard, really. Heavy armor exploit. Do your critical hits have a chance to give you swiftness? That's the one I spoke about before. And I get a lot of crit in this build. And I am running that celestial amulet as well, which is probably what I should have explained first. Uh, hematic focus. You have increased chance to critically strike against bleeding foes. There we go. Um... And I've, I've actually gone for the sigil of geomancy here, so that's going to be the bleed. So make sure I definitely get some bleeding off. That would be very useful. 
um, pinpoint distribution and also skilled marksman. I've gone for no scope in this, so critical hits give me the fury, which is, like I just said, very, very, very good. Um, serrated steel, so bleeding you, bleeding you cause lasts longer, which works well in... Um, the synergy of these trait lines feels very nice as well. It goes well with this adept here. And then finally incendiary powder, which is, you know, we moved that from the explosive line and now that's gone over into firearms. So this is what I'm using for this build now because still, you know, burning is going to be very strong in this in this meta as well. Even with the nerf to Celestial Amulet, I still feel that that amulet is pretty strong. Um, just because you've got that availability of crit, you've got that availability of healing power, of power, of everything you need, especially for an engineer. Um, Celestial is still going to be okay, I think. Um, then I've, I have tried things like Carrion and everything as well, which are very powerful, which I still think are going to be useful as well. But I think, you know, that's going to have to be decided later on as we get into the meta and we get into how teams and like higher level players are playing this kind of stuff. But that's pretty much the build. It's pretty good. Now with the elixirs as well, um, I have actually got two elixirs. So I've got elixir S and I've got elixir X. The reason I've gone for elixir X is because of the mower. Now the mower is very good. Not only are you going to remove some conditions from yourself, which are very useful. So throwing or consuming elixirs removes conditions from those affected it's going to be very very nice indeed so the mower is just you know it's going to be good in AOE for in in team fights as well because you can, it's like an interrupt you know because and turn them into a mower you know that's some that's some good targeting right there let's just double check how many targets that is that is free you can interrupt a lot in the team fight just by doing that you know, it's going to put really put the pressure on, and they're going to have to be very, very careful in team fights versus engineers if you're running that elixir. But of course, you do have the buff to the supply crate as well. The supply crate. Let's just go over to that now quickly to just double check. You do get that drop that you have before, but now you get the the uh, overcharge as well. So if we put down, let's just try the uh, med pack drop. So engineer gets the F5 now. Um, which I've gone shift 5, but you can just supply drop your healing packs. That's six healing packs that you can drop independently of that supply crate. That's pretty epic. You have that control with your elite now, which is just going to make supply crate even stronger. So I'm still thinking, you know, supply crate is probably the thing that will be used. Elixir X is very, very strong as well. So it's nice to have that power now and the choice with the elite. So it's going to be something you're going to have to pick independently or based on, again, on that higher tier SPVP play. But how you use it is going to be up to you. That's some nice healing provided for your team without really using your elite now. Because before, you know, it would have been that elite stun and the combination of heals, which would, which is good for instant team um, CC and healing and regeneration. But I think you can be able to use this in different ways. Let's just put down the um, supply crate here as well. And you can see exactly what I mean. Um, so the healing uh, packs are obviously missing now because they were just placed in our F5. Of course, when you've got your healing, when you've got your crate down, you cannot use that. So it's going to be the detonate instead. So let's have a look. Detonate your supply crate turrets. The blast finishes. <laughs> the blast finishes. Oh my god, this is amazing. So you can overcharge... And it's gonna be it's gonna be a great, great, great um, combo mix-up. So there we'll just see we've got the healing turret I've just put down as a blast finisher, and then our other turret blast finishes. So I just want to go through the uh, exact weapons and obviously sigils and rune and amulet here. I've gone for the celestial amulet. Now this is something I'm testing with at the moment, just because it gives me all the general stats. Um, still, you know, celestial is the main amulet that the NG was using in the meta as well. Has been nerfed, of course, um, with some stats taken out, but still, 
this is um, very powerful, you know, because it gives you that access to all those different stats, which are very, very useful, especially for an engineer, you know, that precision and condition and healing power being very, very important, as well as the power, especially the power with, um, you know, the rifle and the uh, bombs and just, you know, general explosions. But the thing is, that if, because I feel that this is going to be more of a condition oriented meta, I think Holbrack is still going to be the rune of one of the runes of choice because Vampirun is still going to be good with that proc. It's very, very useful. Um, but there's going to be more Condies out there. So I think, you know, that proc's going to be good for your allies to come and heal you when you're in that vapor form. You know, when you're in that mist form. But as long as you are getting cleansed, it's going to be very useful. But if you're not, like, especially if you're going into Q solo, then it might be more useful to go for that Rune of Holbrook. Because of that tw minus 20% um, condition duration applied to you as well. And, you know, you're going to be able to get more might stacking out of this. Um, especially with the different blast finishes that you have when you've got those blasts available for those fire fields that you produce and also that your allies produce. Um, Ellie is still going to be very much in the meta for God's sake. It's going to be very strong, I think. Um, but let's just have a look here at what we've got. So we've got Rifle, we've got Sigil of Geomancy. Now that's good um, synergy with the bleeding, of course, that comes with the uh, firearms traits, as well as the bleeding you just generally put out in this build, you know, you've got from your nades and whatnot as well, from shrapnel grenade as well. It's going to be very, very, very nice to have... Um, the obviously energy as well just in case because okay you've got speedy kits um to a degree you've not got the speedy kits themselves so you're getting the swiftness from heavy armor exploit and then you're getting the uh, vigor from that uh, swiftness as well but that's always going to be when you're in combat and then you're going to be able to get to the next fight now you can stack that swiftness as well which is pretty damn nice um but yeah we'll have to see how well that goes in the actual team fighting environment then we've got the, I've explained the Hellbreaker and I've really explained the Celestial. So that's just a little explanation of why I've picked those sigils. Of course you can change it for things like poison. You still have access to poison, um, but you can go for that poison as well. You could go for extended burning duration, but I don't think you're going to need to because you're going to be applying it so much with your grenades and whatnot. Um, and you're getting some nice crit even just with the Celestial Rifle here. It's This build is okay at the moment. I'd probably switch out bombs for slick shoes uh, or toolkit. But whether or not I would go into that line for the toolkit trait um, where it decreases your cooldowns and whatnot, I don't think so because at the moment it doesn't feel like that line is as strong. So let's have a quick look at uh, the other variation that I've come up with. So this is the other variation and this is going to have the addition of the inventions instead of firearms. So, in order to make this work properly, I've dropped invigorating speed. Okay, we've not got that regeneration of energy. That's something I understand, which could be a bit of an issue, but I will show you why it's not um, as much as an issue in a bit. Um, so we've gone for protection injection. Five second cooldown, and it's a very, very, very good. Protection is great to have, especially with that uptime of five seconds as well, and you're being pressured. Um, it really does make a difference. So let's go into inventions here and have a look exactly what we've got. So cleansing pulse, use healing, using healing skills triggers a cleansing pulse around you. So it's a nice removal of those conditions. Automated medical response. So I always love this. And this has been changed from an adept into an actual trait you can choose now, um, which I think is great. Uh, it's actually been moved further down, I think, as well. It used to be here, I think. Um, so th there was there is overshield as well, which if you're using pistol shield, which I think is actually you know possible in this build, I think it's going to be great for the the condition builds this specific trait line as well. Um, you know you get, do gain protection uh, to ni yourself and nearby allies, which is very useful. Smoke bomb still really meh. You know I'm still not sure why that's there. Um, maybe one day they'll take it away, but not yet apparently. Um, then healing resonator when you use a healing skill you apply regeneration to yourself and nearby allies which is very very good indeed um, you do get that extra uh, healing power as well which is very good um, so let's have a quick look on the next part of the traits now mecha legs was the combination of you know the power shoes and also um, the, 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 the 
the in, the cripple chill and immobilize, which was speed, um, power shoes and leg mods. That's right. Yes. Wow, that took a long time. Um, which I think is a great combination and is the reason why I haven't got for speedy kits in this build. You know, the speedy kits, come, sorry, not the speedy kits, but more the, the um, invigorating speed. So no swiftness with that um, vigor to gain back. You're not going to get that energy region, which is why, you know, I've still gone for that energy here, the energy sigil to make sure you do get that back. Could be an issue. That's the only worry I've got with going with Mecha Legs over the Speedy Kits combination. Um, Soothing Destination, when you trigger a combo blast, when you trigger a combo using a blast finisher, allies near the effect are healed. Could be used if you don't choose to go for Mecha Legs. But still, I've gone for Mecha Legs because of that speed increase, because I've not got that availability of swiftness. Which I think is, you know, if you don't go for that swiftness, that's going to have to be what you go for. If you do, then you can go for um, you can go for that trait as well. So, let's go over to the next one. Energy amplifier. Your healing power is increased while you have regeneration. 250 extra healing power. So when you get this, this is what I'm talking about with that 250 healing power. The reason you're, which is why I said it before, is because of this trait. So when you get this regeneration, your healing power goes up and your, your overall healing will be great. So with a combination of the Celestial Amulet, you know, that nerf that came in for the Celestial Amulet is kind of being altered all the time with your different damage and uh, different mod modifiers that are coming in. Any kind of nerf that came out, really, you know, I mean, it's kind of been negated, but obviously, you know, that's, that stat and that skill would have been a lot higher if it wasn't nerfed. So, you know, you can say that as well. One thing that's been changed about Bunker Down is on the crit is that you do get this med pack as well, which is very good. So you create a proximity mine and a med kit at your location when critically hit with an attack. So I've not got the energy that I'm gaining from speedy kits. I'm um, sorry by invigorating speed, but still, you know, I'm getting healing elsewhere in this trait line. Okay, so the mecha legs... So that that's going to be good for the um, uh, movement speed increase and also the immobilize, um, the immobilized duration is reduced. But also you've got the healing power that's coming out of regeneration, the regeneration of this adept trait here, the heal resonator, and then you've got you know the extra heal coming out from bunker down. So you're making up for some of that dodging where you're going to be damaged anyway. But then you know there is other things to consider because you're not dodging as much. You're not getting as much of the uh, firm, firmobaric detonation, so that's obviously something else to consider. This is why I've got the different variations. This is why I'm still playing with this, and I don't feel that you know the time I've had is probably enough to really give you something finite. And I don't want to do that with engineer because it's it's my baby, it's my main class, and I'm still falling around with it a lot, if I'm honest. And I want to really play in a team fight situation to see which one's better. You know, I can go out there and play versus PVE mobs, but it's not the same, you know. It's not the same as playing versus players, of course. And it's not the same in a 1v1. Um, most people know that. Uh, if you're new and you're watching this, then I would advise you to even try these different variations. I've tried both of these. The Incendiary Powder 1 version, the first one, is very powerful in terms of damage. This one's very good for the survivability as well, but it's not got as much dodge to bring up that, um, that Fermo Detonation trait. So you're not getting all the blast healing from it and some of the might stacking that you might be getting from it. Just the, almost passively from jumping around and dodging, you know. So really, that's it. There's, from my voice, it doesn't sound like I'm excited, but I think I'm almost overwhelmed to a degree with, with Engineer and how many changes there really are. Because I think this is one of the classes which has been changed the most. All of the ch classes have been changed a ton. And I haven't really worked out every single combination, but at the moment... These are exciting times. Try these builds. Let me know which... May, maybe even try these two variants and see when these trait changes go live, which one worked for you, what you think the changes could be, and what you think you know would work the best with... Dependent on what you're coming up against in the next few days as well when this video is released. It's exciting times. I'm going to be starting to make more builds. Tons of build videos will be coming out. Whether they're meta or not, another thing. You know, I'm not a meta build trendsetter. I come up with my own builds and I have fun with it. 
and that's what you guys do that's why you come to my channel because you have fun with the build you're playing you don't limit yourself and you want to try new things whether or not it fails or it succeeds you know sometimes that's not the point sometimes the discussion is good in itself so thank you for watching i hope some of these combinations as well and examples helped i'm going to bring out more videos talking about some of the things independently so i can separate them out from this video but i just wanted the general engineer uh, build feel um, to give you some info and to maybe to help you give you some actual decisions. I think elixirs are going to be used more. HGH could be a thing again, um, which will be very nice. I even think that more people might start to run a few turrets here and there. But, you know, I'm not too keen on that. But, you know, and uh, I might get blamed for even suggesting that. But things like, you know, because you have to go into these trait lines and force them, you could even just mix HGH into a build like this. Especially if you're going to go for Elixir S, which is a lot more viable with that Muttos, um, with the Moa Transform on free targets. And uh, that is it's going to be pretty strong, I think, that Elixir X build. Whether or not it will be take over the supply crate, I don't think so. I'm not 100% sure about that. Because of that, you know, let's have a look at it again. You know, you've got your separate med kit drop. Then you've got the uh, supply crate. You've got the overcharge. So you overcharge it and then you blast to get a ton of healing. You could put your healing turret down and get even more healing as well. You know, there's too, there's too much coming out of this. And there's my fury. There's so much availability for engineers to get the boons even more so now we already had so much um availability to get those boons in the first place now we've got even more with some of these traits that are coming out med kits being dropped when we crit you know regenerate extra healing power and regeneration when we actually put a healing turret down all these different things that are really nice com in combination with each other there's a lot of synergy with engineer in different trait lines now which is what i think they really wanted to do and which they really have done there's still some traits in there i don't feel should still be here they need to be removed because they're useless but there's still a lot of good stuff in this build just don't touch them just there's a couple there's only a couple in there but still, thank you very much for joining me. Look forward to some new builds. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you didn't and you thought it was just a bit too general, then give me a shout below. And if you want anything specifically spoken about again to give you some more information about, then I'll try and do that as well. Just make sure you put a comment below when you do that. Thanks again, guys. I'm excited. This is going to be awesome. See you soon.